Galileo needed was a thing that repeats itself after a certain interval of time, and he found one. His heart beat. In physics, it is not important that what is time, but the measurement of time is important. One of the very deep and interesting questions in this world is this: What is time? Ordinarily, we think of time as the moving clocks, but that is not true. Any machine measuring time cannot be time itself. Machines are only meant to serve as a way to facilitate our needs. Then, what is time? Does time really exist? Maybe such questions are now arising in your mind. But don't worry, you will get answer to these questions by the end of this video. So keep watching. Probably we all agree that physics and also other sciences are all based on observations, especially on quantitative observations, taking numerical measurement of an experiment and then analyzing it. Galileo did the same about 400 years ago when he was studying the motion of things. He took a ball and let it move down a valley and then he started observing its motion. Not only observing but also measuring how far it goes in a certain time. At the time of Galileo, measuring distance was easy, but there were no such method developed for the accurate measurement of time. What Galileo needed was a thing that repeats itself after a certain interval of time, and he found one. His heart beats. Yes, that is true. In his first experiment Galileo used his own pulses to measure time and that worked fine as a good device to measure equal time intervals This experiment by Galileo is revealing two important properties of time First one is that we can understand time only as a period in which an event can happen Just like distance is the interval between two points in the same way time is the interval between two events the other one is this we need repetitive motion to measure time a movement that keeps repeating itself means periodic motion in nature there are many such examples of periodic motion which makes us feel time along with providing systems to measure it like the occurring of day and night day and night happens over again but are they really periodic are all days equal it seems like they are equal but is there any way to test it one way to test it is to compare it with another periodic phenomena an hour glass for example an hour glass can be used to split it into equal but smaller time periods what we only need is a person to turn the hour glass upside down every time the last bit of sand slips from it in this way we can confirm the number of hours in each day the units which we use to measure time in some way or another symbolize events that are repeated again and again whether it is the revolution of earth around the sun or it is the oscillatory motion of a pendulum have you ever seen trees being cut their stems are full with concentric rings and each ring is formed every 7 or 10 years this too is a periodic event a natural clock in our discussion till now we are only being able to understand this Time can only be defined in terms of repetitive motion of some periodic event. To fully understand what time is, we need to look at some other things. Like we humans can experience time in two ways, or to say time is of two different types: physical time and psychological time. It might sound strange to you, but it is going to become very clear as soon as we are going to talk about it. time means movement in physical world any event that takes place only happen due to the movement of time physical time is responsible for the natural events to occur energy that is produced in the nuclear explosions made inside the sun's core reaches its surface in the form of light and heat and then it finally approaches the earth while traveling its long way in the empty space numerous other processes like this are happening perpetually all over the universe and the same are responsible for our continuous perception of time if at some point all of the processes of our universe stop suddenly and everything becomes stagnant can you even imagine what time is of course not so it becomes clear that time is such a physical quantity which help things to move and which act as a catalyst for natural processes to take place According to the laws of thermodynamics the net entropy of our universe always keep increasing continuously it never decreases 
and maybe that's why the flow of time is unidirectional. Now that we have already mentioned entropy, there is no harm in looking at it a little deeper. Like in a week or 10 days, we all keep the things moved here and there in our homes in order at their right place so that it can be useful on time and looks good as well. That is, we try to create order around us in a way, but in a day or two, things start to crumble. What happens is this, states of disorder are much more in number than the states of order. A single thing can be at many wrong places which we call disorderly states in the language of physics. So more the number of things, more the states of disorder. And because instead of order, something can exist in the state of disorder in more number of ways, our universe is constantly shifting from the state of order to the state of disorder. This, the measurement of disorder is entropy. By the way, entropy also symbolizes our ignorance about the state of a system, but that is not our topic of discussion here. So we'll skip that. So what is the relation of entropy to the flow of time? To understand this, we have to go down to the molecular level, but even deeper, down to the atoms. 99% of an atom is surrounded with electron clouds, which according to Bohr's atomic theory occupy different energy levels in an atom. Together with energy, electrons can also have different states of angular momentum and spin and these three combine to form a set of quantum numbers and these set of quantum numbers are used to completely define the state of an invisible electron inside an atom. Each set of quantum numbers symbolize a different state and the most stable state, the state of least energy for an electron is called the ground state, while the others are excited states. As electrons do, other subatomic particles like protons, neutrons and photons also behave in the same manner when they are put under restrain. A system can either be in its ground state or one of its excited states. Ground state being most stable is an orderly state. And as the system evolves to one of its excited states, it go on moving towards disorder. At fundamental level, this very moment of universe is time, physical time. One more thing, physical time always exists in present because the universe which was there yesterday has evolved in today's universe, which according to the law of thermodynamics is an irreversible process. It cannot be changed. That clearly means that it is not possible to travel back in time. Time travel to the past cannot be done. Theory of relativity suggests that we can only time travel to the future and that too in the true sense is not time travel but it is time dilation. Try to understand this. Time dilation means for someone the movement of time slows down in special circumstances. He does not travel in time but for him the time passes slowly in comparison to the rest of the world. Then if it is so that Time travel cannot be done, why is it such a huge debatable topic among scientists? Why all science fiction movies have that big craze of time travel? This is because basically men confuse physical time with psychological time. Just like physical time is a resemblance of physical activities, psychological time is born out of the movement of thoughts in our mind. There is always some or other thought present in our mind. Before one thought goes away, another thought immediately takes its place. Even in the state of sleep, these thoughts do not let go. They are there in the form of dreams. Thoughts are born when our mind tries to act in the present with past experience, memories and knowledge so as to create a better future. Due to this movement of thought in our mind, there is an illusion of psychological time and this aspect of time is not real. It is only an illusion, that is why our mind either live in past or it imagine about its future. It cannot be in the present. To do so, the mind has to be made quiet and in a quiet mind, there is no movement of thought and so cannot be the psychological time. To physics, it is not important that what is time, but the measurement of time is important. Measurement of time is needed in understanding any phenomena fully from the driving speed of a car to the technology that is there in operating a communication satellite functionally. Nothing can work without the accurate measurement of time. 
so this we already know that physics is based on observation but before the end of this video i would also like to tell you rather ask you this if there is no observer in this universe will time still exist probably the first thought you all get is this why not what different does it make to the existence of time if we the observers are not let me know your thoughts in the comment section please like and share and do not forget to subscribe if you are new